So yesterday I um yesterday I covered breaking news that had happened in the Supreme Court where the Supreme Court basically struck down a Wisconsin law extending the deadline for mail-in ballots from November 3rd to November 9th. Uh, there are two other cases in Pennsylvania and North Carolina where the Supreme Court has upheld uh, mail-in ballot delivery extension laws there that are being argued before the Supreme Court and waiting for uh, a hearing uh, for those particular games. Uh, for, sorry, for uh, for those particular laws. And uh, it's very likely that those laws are going to get struck down as well now that Amy Coney Barrett is joining the Supreme Court, which means that um, just like... Wisconsin's uh, mail-in ballot delivery deadline went from November 9th to November 3rd. Pennsylvania's deadline is about to go from November 6th to November 3rd. And North Carolina's is about to go from November 12th to November 6th. So all of these states' uh, mail-in ballot delivery deadlines are getting pushed forward by three to six days, uh, which gives USPS... Um, very few options in making sure that everything gets delivered as they thought they would originally be able to. So this guide is basically just going to streamline all of the um, best ways that you can make sure as a voter in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, or North Carolina being jumped on with a sudden change in law, make sure that your vote gets counted because at this point in all of those states, even if you were to, as soon as USPS opens tomorrow, if you were to go drop it off in the mailbox there, basically for them to pick it up and deliver it, there's no guarantee, and in the cases of Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, it's highly unlikely that your mail-in ballot is going to get delivered on time to be counted. So, um, and even in North Carolina, it's a pretty tall order to guarantee. Uh, there are going to be votes that don't get counted because of this law, and it, it is a deliberate attempt to make sure people's votes don't get heard. So we're just going to go line by line through the best ways to get your vote counted in each of these states. All right, so... We're going to start with Wisconsin. So in Wisconsin, as I said, the original mail-in ballot deadline was uh, November 9th. As of yesterday, it is November 3rd. Uh, that means if you send your mail-in ballot out now and try and send it through the Postal Service, it will almost definitely not get delivered on time. Uh, there are only five business days till the election, and this is going to be the busiest week for the USPS that probably has possibly ever existed. So... Um, the things that you want to do are if you have a completed mail-in ballot that you want to deliver yourself, the best thing to do is to, is to hand it straight to your municipal clerk. Your municipal clerk is where all of your mail-in ballots are going. Um, so there will probably be drop boxes, hopefully all over your county, but those drop boxes have to be picked up. Basically, the ballots in those drop boxes have to be picked up and then delivered all the way from those drop boxes to the municipal county clerk. That so every step between the mail-in ballot leaving your hand and arriving at your county clerk, that is another step in which something can go wrong. Voter interference can occur, some kind of delays in the mail-in ballots being picked up, the clerk employee, there might be someone, someone tests positive for COVID, and then everything gets slowed down, someone becomes sick. The best thing you can do is take your mail-in ballot and put it at the end destination. That is your municipal clerk. So in the description below, there is a paste bin that will contain a link to an official Wisconsin government website that tells you how to look up your municipal clerk. What you should do is you should look up who your municipal clerk is, call them as soon as their hours are open, call them, find out what early voting hours are, and make sure that you drop off your mail-in ballot before the last day of early voting in your county. Okay? It is very important that you do that because if for any reason you're not able to deliver your mail-in ballot, you can still have your vote counted by simply bringing your completed mail-in ballot to an early, polling, or early voting poll site, which also uh, links to how to look up your polling place are in the description below. Uh, just click on that paste bin and it'll have all the information you need. Find your early voting site, go up to a poll worker, surrender your completed mail-in ballot, they will spoil it in front of you, and then they will let you vote early in person. Okay? 
no matter what, the best way to make sure that your vote is, uh, is, is processed and counted is to vote in person and just surrender your mail-in ballot. But obviously you've completed your mail-in ballot. If you can just deliver it to your county clerk, then you can easily get your vote in. And uh, yeah, good. And like I said, if there's any issues, if you have any problems getting your mail-in ballot in, this is why you should uh, make sure that you do all of these steps before the last day of early voting. That way, if anything goes wrong, you can simply go to your early voting poll site, surrender your mail-in ballot, make sure you bring your mail-in ballot and the auto return envelope with you, surrender both of them, have them spoiled in front of you, go vote in person, guaranteed you are going to have your vote counted. Now, if you do wind up going to vote in person, you will need photo ID to work. That ID must be either valid or it must not have expired any sooner than uh, November 6, 2018, which is the date of the last election. Um, there's a list of valid uh, photo IDs uh, that are unexpired or expired before, uh, unexpired or expired after November 6, 2018. That includes a Wisconsin issued driver's license, a Wisconsin Department of, Tra Department of Transportation issued ID, military ID issued by U.S. Uniform Service, U.S. passport, or a photo ID from a federally recognized indigenous tribe. There are also some IDs that are valid in place of, say, a driver's license, but these IDs must be unexpired. Um, and they must have a photo on them. So a federally issued veterans photo ID must be valid, but it'll work. A certificate of naturalization issued on or after November 3rd, 2018, that is within two years before the current election date, all right? Or a provisional driving receipt issued by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation or an ID card receipt issued by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. All of these are listed in the pay spin for you to verify. Um, all of these ID forms must be unexpired, the ones that I just listed. The previous ones, they can be uh, valid or they can have expired no earlier than the last uh, midterm election, which is November 6, 2018. Now let's do Pennsylvania. The stand-in deadline for receiving your mail-in ballot at the place where they counted, at the County Board of Elections, is currently November 6. Now that was held up by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and the U.S. Supreme Court came to a 4-4 tie deciding whether or not to strike it down. So currently, that is the deadline. Still, your ballot has to either be hand-delivered or postmarked on November 3rd or before November 3rd. Okay? Now, Amy Coney Barrett has just joined the Supreme Court, which means it's very likely that law is going to get struck down, which means that mail-in ballot reception deadline is going to get advanced to November 3rd. This, once again, just like in Wisconsin, makes it much less likely that if you mail your ballot out today, in fact, it makes it very unlikely if you mail your ballot out today that it's actually going to get to the County Board of Elections on time. So what can you do? Same thing, except instead of municipal clerk, it's your County Board of Elections. Take your mail-in ballot. Complete it. Now, this is very important. In Pennsylvania, you received an inner secrecy envelope as well as an outer return envelope. If you don't put your, you have to put your mail-in ballot in the inner secrecy envelope and then put that envelope into the outer return envelope and seal both of them. If you do not follow those instructions, your mail-in ballot will not be counted. So it's very important. Mail-in ballot, inner secrecy envelope. Seal it, put the inner secrecy envelope into the outer return envelope. Seal that. Make sure you do that and then drop off that envelope at your county board of elections. There will also be drop boxes around your county. I highly recommend you circumvent those, go straight to your board of elections. You can drop it off there and it avoids any possibility of proud, like uh, um, we, we won't name any particular group, but any voter interference or suppression group jumping up, trying to set mailboxes on fire like was done a few days ago. Uh, in Boston, trying to attack USPS people, trying to attack, uh, uh, you know, clerk employees and things like that. The best way to avoid any of that happening and to guarantee your vote gets counted, go straight to your county BOE, drop off that mail-in ballot. Once again, inner secrecy envelope, outer return envelope. If you, now, if you cannot find your county board of elections, or you get there and you're not sure where to give it, or you're not sure that you use the inner secrecy envelope or you didn't follow the instructions in any other way. If 
there, for any reason you are worried that if you continue submitting your mail-in ballot that it might not get counted, you can simply go to your early voting poll site and vote in person. All you got to do is bring your mail-in ballot, the envelopes attached, surrender them to be spoiled, sign a declaration, they'll let you vote in person, your vote will be counted, guaranteed. Bob's your uncle. So, good. In order to find your uh, in order to find your county board of elections, you'll need to know your county. I've listed a link for you to look up what county you are in in case you don't know or for you to verify. Once you know what county you are in, go to the link that uh, go to the link under the caption where is my county board of elections in the paste bin below. Go to that link, enter your county, it'll tell you where your board of elections is. That's where you can drop off your mail-in ballot. If you don't know your early voting poll site, which most people don't, there is also a link in the paste bin underneath where is my early voting poll site. Click that link, give the information required, you know your county now, you know your address now. If you need any of that information, it's all in the previous links. Find your polling place, go there, make sure you bring your mail-in ballot. Also, make sure that uh, you have voter ID as needed. If you've already voted at that polling place, you don't need to show photo ID, though it never hurts to bring it. If you're a first-time voter, or if you moved to Pennsylvania and are voting for the first time at a new polling place, you have to show ID to vote. Acceptable forms, Pennsylvania driver's license, your uh, PennDOT ID card, that's Pennsylvania Department of Transportation ID card, an ID issued, any ID, uh, any photo ID issued by the Pennsylvania or U.S. government, um, your U.S. passport, U.S. military ID, student ID, employee ID, a confirmation issued by the county voter registration office, a non-photo ID issued by uh, Pennsylvania or U.S. government, a firearm permit, or a copy of a current utility bill, bank statement, paycheck, or a government check that includes your name and address. So any of the uh, utility bill, bank statement, paycheck, government check, all of those have to include your name and address. So that's Pennsylvania, all right? Find your county. Use your county to find your county vote of elections. Drop off your mail-in ballot. Inner secrecy envelope, outer return envelope. If you're not sure about any of those, if you're not sure that your vote's going to get counted, if you're not sure you followed the instructions, just go vote in person. Use the third link to find your early, polling, uh, early voting poll site. Go there, surrender your ballot, go vote. Easy. Bam. Now let's do North Carolina. The standing mail-in ballot deadline for the 2020 election is November 12th at 5 p.m., still has to be postmarked or hand-delivered by 5 p.m. Um, November 3rd. That's election day. So you, you, you can't go dropping it off um, at, at 7 p.m. at your county board of elections on election day just because the reception deadline is uh, November 12th. It has to be postmarked or hand-delivered by end of business on November 3rd. But it can be received up until November 12th. But that law is likely going to get struck down, which means that the stand, that the mail-in ballot deadline effectively is going to go to November 6th. But once again, there's any number of things that can happen between election night and November 6th where the Supreme Court says, I want you guys to stop counting, um, counting votes because uh, Brett Kavanaugh literally just came out and said yesterday uh, that it would be unconstitutional or, or something like that. He said it would be uh, poor precedent or unconstitutional or unlawful for mail-in ballots to flip the results of an election. So that in itself, that argument can be used next week to say even votes received before November 6th per North Carolina law cannot be counted if they're received after the election. So be very careful of that. My recommendation, get it in before uh, election day. Just Go to your county board of elections. You can find your county board of elections, the name of your county, and your election day voting site in the first link in the pastement below for North Carolina. Once you know that information, go to your county board of elections, drop off your mail-in ballot. If for any reason you're unsure of where to give your mail-in ballot in or you're unsure that it's going to get counted, you can go to your early voting poll site once again. Go to your early voting poll site, find it using the link below. All you need to know is your county. You can use the first link to find your county. Use the second link to find your early voting poll sites. Go to one of your one-stop election sites. Go. You don't have to bring your ballot with you. Can't hurt to bring it with you. You can watch them spoil it right in front of you. Or you can leave it at home. Use it for toilet paper. The only thing you need to do is make sure that your mail-in ballot does not get delivered. As long as you are submitting only one ballot. So let's say you have a mail-in ballot. 
you want to go vote in person because you're not sure if it's going to get counted, you may have messed something up, you can leave it at home. Just don't mail it out. All right? Shred it, toss it into the trash. Or take it to the polling site, have them shred it for you. Go to the polling site, tell them, I want to vote in person. They'll let you vote in person. That's it. That's it. They let you vote in person. The last day of early voting for North Carolina is October 31st. That is this coming Saturday. Make sure you know the hours of your early voting poll sites before you go to turn in your mail-in ballot. Look that up right now. Look up your local polling site right now. Find out their hours. Find out if they're open on Saturday. If they're not open on Saturday, make sure you go by Friday. In fact, just go today. Just go today. If it's after business, go tomorrow when business is open. Voter ID. If you're a North Carolina voter and you voted in North Carolina, anywhere in North Carolina before, you don't need to show ID to vote. But if you're a first-time voter who registered by mail and you did not provide a driver's license number or the last four digits of your social security number on your registration form, you'll need to show ID to vote. If you provided either of those bits of information, you don't need ID. All right? If you do need to show ID because you didn't provide that information, acceptable forms of ID include driver's license or state ID, U.S. passport, employee ID, student ID, military ID, or a copy of a utility bill, bank statement, or paycheck. You probably want to make sure that has your name and address on them. All right? Cool. All of the information that I just gave is uh, attached in the links below, in the paste bins below. As soon as you watch this video, look up all of the information that you need. So your county, county board of elections, and the hours of your early voting poll sites, because your last resort is always going to be going and voting early in person. And you wanna make sure that everything you do happens before the closing time of the last early voting polls. I don't want you unnecessarily endangering yourself by going out on election day. But I do think it's important enough that if you feel even remotely like it's important enough or you, if, you, if you feel you can do it safely on election day just to make sure your voice is heard, take your mail-in ballot into your election day poll site, get it spoiled there, vote on election day. Make sure your vote is heard. This is the most important election of our lifetimes. Good luck.